New Year, new board. The gang is coming over to play this weekend and I want the first game played in 2023 to be on a brand new board. A butt spanking cool board. Oops. Oh no, I got ink on Games Workshop's nice cardboard mat. We here at Eons of Battle have been working hard on a new set of terrain, the Dark Factorum, with our artist Licorice and our sculptor Radium Minis, and it should make for the coolest board of all time. Last time I did this, it was horribly crooked, so I want to see if I can do a better job. <laughs> all right, it's pretty bad, but I'll live with it. This is going to be a board covered in steel and iron and girders and rivets and flesh and blood and it's gonna be super gross. But step one, it's gonna be laying down the foundation. I took all the sprues from my Sylvaneth Battle Force that I just put together and I cleaned it and sanded it nice and flat. And so I'm thinking this might make for some really interesting shapes to make kind of a mechanical looking ground. And I want it to be a mechanical looking ground on top of flesh. So I'm gonna put down some of this sculpt -a mold plaster. So this stuff dries really, really quick. So I'm hoping I can make enough to lay down a foundation, press in the sprues, and then let it dry. Not only is this going to be the first board of 2023, but this is going to be the first Kill Team board I beat Sean on, because I've never beaten Sean in Kill Team. But on this board, there will be no chance of failure. Man, it's really soaking it up. All right. Oh God, definitely need two batches. It's already starting to firm up just a little bit. This is an incredibly weird sensation. It's like I'm massaging oatmeal. Ooh, it is sticky. I was, thank goodness. I was a little worried that uh, the plastic wouldn't really want to stick down. Got to be like Jeff Goldboom from Jurassic Park. Must go faster. Must go faster. Now I can hear you all saying, Jay, why didn't you just wear gloves? And the reason is I didn't think of it. But that's no problem because I am moving on. The real star of this board is going to be all of the lovely terrain that sits on top. <sighs> Poison. This is easily the most we've ever printed for a project. This terrain is all about a factory that's like this close to being a chaos factory. The Imperium hates technology. Well, they don't hate technology, but they hate innovation and new ideas. But you kind of need that for a factory. So the denizens of this factory have decided they love humanity and the human body and the human form and all of its perfection and the emperor of mankind bestowed upon humanity its power. And so they've decided to use human fleshy giblets in order to make their machines work. And it's not a horrible, I mean, it's an incredibly evil, awful idea, but it's not necessarily a bad idea because a factory would be very, very useful if you didn't need to power it, you only had to feed it. I want this to be incredibly macabre, incredibly gross, incredibly off-putting, and I think that that'll be the perfect thing for a grim, dark factory in the 40K setting. So give me something dirty till the morning. Break it down now. Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Oh. This is going to be epic, and it's I glued to my hand. This is a factory powered by flesh, and one of the things that keeps everything moving is these gigantic beating hearts. Are they organic hearts? Are they mechanical hearts? Who's to say? But they sure do pump a lot of very viscous red fluid all over the place. Right over here. Oh, yes, believe it. Don't need a reason. Grab me crazy. I'm extra seasoned. So thick and lean. Your favorite cuisine. All right, is that going to be perfect? It uh, is too small. But we dirty talk and we get the same company and decent. We in agreement. Hot fill in these terminals. Boom, like magic. 
Back now for this beautiful bundle of nerves. Alright, now it's time for some small decorations. They're so cute! Ah, oh, little skulls and candles. Oh yeah, this is one properly appeased terminal. Oh, I got stuff all over my nice shirt. I think it's ready, I think it's... I think this is looking nice. In my head, I was thinking sprue is what, about five millimeters tall? So I'll put a layer of the goop down, five millimeters tall, squish this down, and then I'll have a nice, fairly smooth, but interestingly textured surface. But uh, this is all just sort of sitting on top of it. Ooh, okay, it's gluing down. You know what, even if it's not exactly how I pictured it in my head, I wanna try. I just wanna finish this experiment and see what happens. Yeah, okay, I give up. Actually, I don't give up, but this attempt didn't do it. So I'm gonna try again, and this time I'm gonna do it right. Oh boy. I can clean that up. So the reason it's gonna go better this time, I'm gonna mix in some normal plaster to hopefully slow the drying time and make it settle a little bit more. And these aren't perfectly flat. So to make sure that they're flat while they're drying, I'm gonna put in some sewing pins. This is my little pin caddy from when I was a seamstress. And instead of mixing two little batches, I'm gonna do one big batch all at once. Ooh, and I'm gonna wear gloves. Squishing, which is what I was going for. Look at that edge, it's like a tuna fish sandwich. The boards had a little bit of time to dry and yes, ah, before I had about 10% of what I wanted, but now I have like 50% of what I wanted, which is good enough for me. Ah, it worked out though. It actually sort of looks like what was in my brain. What do you think's in these barrels? I'll give you a hint, it's red, it's sticky. That's right, it's Kool-Aid. I have all these acrylic spray paints from Army Painter. And so I'm gonna use these to prime. They're not primer, but I think they'll get the job done. Let's start out with a little gray. Neat, it is a lot of parts. Green next. As you can see, I'm being very careful. And I'm just gonna keep working on this base because it's all about that base. It looks, it looks a little yucky right now, but I'm gonna make it look even grosser. Now it needs a little dry brushing. Ooh, that's making some really interesting things. And what's fun is it's the same color as the sprue already was. It's kind of like I'm painting it back into regular sprue. I need a white paint and I need to pee so bad. Doing a lighter dry brushing of this because I'm gonna put a wash over it and a wash is gonna darken everything. So I want it as bright as I can get it so that it dulls down to the brightness I want. All right, now about that wash. So I wanna make a bloody wash. So I'm gonna put in some red paint and then a generous amount of matte medium. I was thinking about gloss, but I can always gloss it up later. I'd rather have the option. And lots of water. Then some flow aid. You're not, you don't need that that much flow aid. And now that it is a lovely shade of Pepto Bismol, it's ready to go. Ew! Ah, oh, it's so. It looks like brains. I want to get just a little bit of the red off of the sprue. Ooh, look at that. I'm gonna say that's good. My wash might need a little bit more tweaking, but I'm gonna add more stuff to this later. Right now, the paint is wet and fragile and I need to let it dry. 
All right, that should be all of the base. Now, a little airbrush time. Call my bitch Scotty, she too hot. You catch her on a magazine in the lobby. Had to call F, bro, do you copy the ops on me? So bring the shot. The airbrushing did a lot of really nice subtle stuff, but now I want to dry brush the Jesus out of everything. I want every single little tiny perfect detail to be crispy. And you know what they say about crispy details? They take wash paints really, really well. These data terminals are the central nervous system of this factory. They tell all of the machines and all of the components exactly what to do. Everything has been undercoated, so I've got all of my highlights and all of my shadows. So now I want to lay in some colors. And I think the easiest way to do this is going to be a little speed paint through the old airbrush. A little black ink, flow aid, little matte medium, and lots of water. Yeah, let's, let's just play around. If it dries exactly like that, it's my favorite thing. I think I can cheat a little bit with the wash and airbrush it on. Yeah, we go through a lot of paper towel, but that ought to work great. I start with airbrushing these hearts. All right, that is a lot of paint on some catwalks and railings, but I don't want to look at them anymore. So I'm going to go back to the base plate so that I can finally start putting it together and consolidating it. R.I.P. Speed Paint Palette Bone. They're all used up. I think a little more, maybe silver dry brushing on the sprues. I want it to look like the sprue is like a weird cage holding back a wall of flesh. Maybe I'll use a little bit of this black wash. All right, assembly. I did not take notes and I barely remember how it goes. This is like if Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, if Willy Wonka was a butcher. <laughs> I'm just gonna try to tack it down where I can. Oh, oh look at all the meat. And this isn't even its final form. Still have to do all the blood. So I got a couple different tools for this. I've got some Maj Paj Dimensional Magic. This should look like pools of blood. Then I've got Uhu glue or Uwu glue that can make some stringy, sickly tendrils of blood. And then I also have, um, not on me, but I also have just some blood effect paint. So yeah, let's really get this sucker glistening. So I have this blood from Army Painter, and initially I really didn't like it because it's really magenta, but it actually dries redder. And I find that bright, saturated color actually helps sell blood a little bit more because it doesn't, it doesn't darken so much when you put it over a dark surface, like this dark, dark board. Let's just see what happens when I give it a little flick. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's so gross. Dimensional Magic 3D Accents. Do not shake causes bubbles. That's good to know. Apply to highlight and add dimension to projects. Let dry for 24 hours. Clean while wet with soap and water. All the instructions. All right, I figure. Let's take some of this and a little bit of blood. That's what I was looking for. Uwu, the all-purpose adhesive, made in Germany. A little bit of red. That was a lot of red. It's so gross. It's lovely. And by lovely, I mean it's horrifying. Look at all those pillars coming out of the meat. Oh 
on, maybe these these weird veins actually do something to help the machine communicate with the being that is this factory. Even this paintbrush looks a little gross now. All right, the blood is all done. Ugh, I want to put it all in place. All right, that is all the blood and flesh and meat. And it looks, it looks pretty good. But there's one, one last thing I want to do. Little chicken scratch on each one. Touching it down and giving it a little wiggle. Woo! There we go! Ah, the bright neon green on top of all of the magenta and dark colors. It really makes it pop. It's the colors of Invader Zim, that old show on Nickelodeon. I love it. Ah, wait till the boys see this. Let me unveil the first board of 2023. Wow, is there a... Uh, general theme with this one? Like, what's the setting supposed to be here? Blood. Blood. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the inside of an organ in there. Like a smoker's lung. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this board went over great. We had a blast playing on it. Sean won, but it was a lot of fun. We created all this terrain and it's available on our Patreon for the month of January. If any of you would like to make your own bloody boards, this is where to get it. And it's super modular. If for some reason you don't want to make pools of blood, can't relate, I guess you could make normal buildings or grim dark tournament L's. The Dark Factorum will be turning out las guns and blood for the next thousand years, unless some goody two-shoes takes it over like the Tau. 